This is the course Mechanical Vibration. Today, we will talk about two degrees of freedom system and one application is the vibrations absorbers. My name is Carmen Miller Carter. This represents part of chapter nine, vibration control of our textbook, Mechanical Vibration from Ground. The vibration absorbers, also called dynamic vibration absorbers, is a mechanical device used to reduce or eliminate unwanted vibration of a harmonically excited system. It consists of another mass and stiffness attached to the main or original mass that needs to be protected from vibration and therefore constitute a two degree of freedom system. So, as we see this figure over here, this is the original system and this here is the mass and stiffness added to the system and it will become the absorber or the vibration. The vibration absorber is commonly used in machinery that operates at a constant speed because the vibration absorber is tuned to one particular frequency and is affected only over a narrow band of frequencies. The amplitude of a machine that operates at resonance is to be reduced with a vibration absorber. This machine over here works in this range of frequency. And as you recall, the resonance means that the natural frequency of the machine, which is defined as the square root of the constant of the spring divided by the mass, is equal or very similar to the forcing frequency. When the absorber is added, the system has two degrees of freedom, and the new system will have two natural frequencies. This two natural frequencies are different from the original natural frequency that the system had when it was only a single degree of freedom. The step one of the analysis of an undamped dynamic vibration absorber is to find the equation of motion. So we do the free body diagram of each of these two masses and we add forces in the y direction. The force of this spring K2 will be the constant of the spring times the relative displacement between mass 1 and mass 2. And this is the force that we got here. And then we got the force of the first spring plus the external force equals to mass times acceleration. In the case of the second mass, which is the dynamic vibration absorber, we only have the force of the spring and equals to mass times acceleration. Remember that we don't include the weight because we are measuring the vibration respect to the equilibrium position. We can write our equations with all the variables depending on x, acceleration, and position in the left side of the equation and the forces in the right side of the equation. We can write our equation in matrix form and we will have a mass matrix which is diagonal and a stiffness matrix which is this one right here. See that this matrix is symmetrical. The response to a harmonic force is a harmonic function with the same frequency. And we can derive this expression, which is the response, twice and input that into our equation. This is the mass matrix and this is the stiffness matrix. And this is the response because we like to find the amplitude of that response. This is what is called the mechanical impedance matrix. And the response will be the inverse of our mechanical impedance matrix times the magnitude of the external harmonic force. The amplitude of the response is then the inverse of our mechanical impedance times the amplitude of the external force. Please recall how we invert a two by two matrix. We have to divide by the determinant of the matrix times, we switch those two terms and is the negative of two, these two terms. Therefore, the amplitude, take this expression right here for the mass one, which was the original machine, and x two, which was the dynamic absorber that we included in our system. We are primarily interested in reducing the amplitude of the machine that was initially on resonance and the amplitude was very big. Therefore, the numerator of this expression right here, this one right here, 
should be equals to zero. So what we want to do is this term equals to zero. In order to make this expression equals to zero, we see that the natural frequency of the dynamic vibration absorbed by itself will be equals to the external force frequency that we are applying. So, and that's how we are going to design our dynamic absorber. The relationship between the stiffness and the mass of the dynamic absorber will be equals to the square of the forcing frequency. As you recall, the machine operates initially at resonance. Therefore, the relation between the constant of the spring and the mass of the machine is also the forcing frequency. Let's define omega 1 square as the relation shared between k1 and m1 with is the properties of the machine. And omega 2 square k2, k2 and over m2 which are the properties of the dynamic absorber. And we have a relationship between k2 over k1 if we do a little bit of algebraic manipulation, we can get this expression right here. And as to recall, the static deflection is the magnitude of the external force divided by the constant of the spring of the machine. So these two expressions that we found in the previous slide, if we divide all the expression by K1, we will have something like that, which gives us the static deflection, and this is a relation between the forcing frequency and the properties of the dynamic absorber, and this here is the forcing frequency divided by the properties of the machine. We can further simplify this expression, including some adimensional parameters. We can include mu, which is the characteristics of the absorber divided by the characteristics of the machine. Then we have the static deflection, which you know is the magnitude of the force applied divided by the constant of the spring of the machine. So if we include those factors here, we get the following responses, whereas you know R will be the frequency ratio and mu will be the ratio between the characteristics of the machine and the absorber. Let's do the analysis of the system working by itself, the machine without the absorber. When we have a harmonic force, we have the response will be equals to also a harmonic function and the operating frequency will be the same as in the response. And the difference is that we will have that the magnitude will be multiplied by the magnification factor and the static deflection. The magnification factor is 1 over 1 minus r squared. We see this graph. We see that at r equals 1, we know that we are in resonance and therefore the magnification factor goes to infinity and so does the response. So if that's the operating frequency of our system, we have to fix that. And the solution to fix that is adding the vibration absorber. So when we add the vibration absorber, we want to analyze the magnitude of the response of the machine. We found that this is the equation that describes the response. So let's grab that expression. Remember that mu is the ratio between the characteristics of the absorber and the characteristics of the machine. And the R is the frequency ratio between the operating frequency and the frequency of the system. So this is the graph, this green graph is the amplitude of the response of the machine. And as you see for R equals to one, response equals to zero. That means that including that other spring creates a force that neutralizes the forcing force and making the displacement equals to zero for that operating frequency. We have two new natural frequencies because right now we have a two degree of freedom system and then we will have to find those two new frequencies. 
This graph is done for the ratio between the characteristics of the absorber and the characteristics of the machine as 1 over 5. It means the mass of the machine is 5 times the mass of the absorber. Let's now see the graph for the amplitude of the absorber. We found that that amplitude is described by this equation. And if we make R equals to 1, those two terms cancel, right? So the response over the static deflection will be equals to 1 over mu, being mu, the radio between the characteristics of the absorber and the machine. If we substitute mu by k1 over k2 and the static deflection by f sub 0 over k1, we can cancel 1k1 and we get that the response of the absorber at r equals to 1 has this expression right here. So we, if we graph this function, we see that this amplitude at r1 is right here, right? It's 1 over mu. And it's negative in the sense that if the machine is going down, the absorber is going up. So we can say that the dimensions of the absorber will be determined as how much we allow the amplitude of the response of the absorber. So we will calculate the mass 2, setting up, for example, a limit in the response of the absorber. We have f sub 0, we have the frequency of operation, and we can calculate the mass of the absorber. Or if we have the mass of the absorber, then we can calculate the amplitude that that new element will create in the system. Finally, we can graph the, the, all the responses together, and we see that initially we have the system in resonance at r equal 1, then we included a absorber, and then we have that the response of the machine is equal to 0 at 1, and the response of the absorber has a specific magnitude that we can calculate. So we were able to calculate the response of the machine and the response of the absorber. And we see that in both cases, we have two no natural frequencies that where the system will not be able to operate because we will have resonance. So we like to calculate where those new two natural frequencies are. To do that, we will do the analysis of the equation of motion. The equation of motion in matrix form, take this form. We already have done this, and you know that the natural frequencies are found by finding the determinant of the, const of the stiff matrix minus the eigenvalues times the uh, mass matrix. We solve this determinant and we can uh, come up with the characteristic polynomial and then we solve the characteristic polynomials and then we get the frequency. Remember that we are defining omega 1 and omega 2 as the initial frequency that the system had without being coupling together. We can simplify those expressions again by the radio of the masses between the machine and the absorber. The definition of the natural frequency of the machine by itself. We know that both natural frequencies of the system by themselves were equal. And these are the two natural frequencies. And then we have the frequency ratio, which is R1 and R2. And we get this expression. So let's graph these expressions. And here we have the two natural frequency for the response of the machine. And here we have the two natural frequencies for the response of the absorber. And those are given by this equation right here. With the characteristic polynomial, we can rewrite it by dividing by this term over here. And since we remember that we are designing our vibration absorber to have the same initial frequency as the machine, then we can write this expression right here. This is very useful because this relates the natural frequencies with the characteristics of the absorber 
related to the machine. We can even solve for the characteristic of the machine in terms of the new natural frequency. So for example, if we want the new natural frequency has to be at least 20% apart from the initial operating frequency, that will mean that R is equal to 0.8, then we can find mu which in this case will be 0 0.2025, and we having the initial mass of the machine, we can find the mass of the absorber that will meet that condition. I'd like to show you the software that I use to graph all these expressions, and this is GeoGebra, and I invite you to use it. Here you see that the red graph is the response of the machine by itself, and R equals 1 gives you the resonance. In this case, R, well, I name it X, right? Then if I turn on the function for the response of the machine, I get that the magnitude that R equals to 1 is equals to 0, right? That expression that we already analyzed. And then I can turn on the response of the absorber. Here is the response of the absorber in the blue graph. And as you see, I have a magnitude for R equals to 1. And I have the two uh, new natural frequencies that give me displacements that go to infinite. And then I can graph the expressions for those two natural frequencies. And I get the graph that I was analyzing in the presentation.